20 showed up for almost two hours because this is such an important piece of any solutions that we can pursue for U.S. leadership in the world on issues that matter. And like these senators and former governors, uh, I've been all over the world in the last several years. And there's not a place in the world where they're not looking back at the United States kind of wondering, why are you not pursuing an ambitious nuclear agenda? It's kind of a no-brainer for the U.S. so that you can be a leader on climate change instead of having your head buried in the sand. But that's what other countries are doing. Why is the United States not doing that? And I hear that from our colleagues around the world. And then the president says that Iran should have the right to pursue nuclear power. Why should we not have the right to pursue nuclear power with the full support of this administration? That's ironic. But there's a lot of momentum around this industry being a piece of any solution. And there's still time. Cap and trade has moved through the committee now in the House. Uh, the Senate, we're counting on to have a stronger nuclear commitment, but there's still time for everybody from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue back to the Capitol to understand this is very, very important. Yesterday, I dropped a bill in the House of Representatives. It just simply says, for the purposes of federal law, nuclear energy is hereby declared to be clean energy, and any provision of federal law relating to clean energy shall be considered to include nuclear energy. Why? Because that is a piece of any responsible solution as we look at cap and trade, climate change, whatever the compromise is going to be. I'm also an original co-sponsor of the House Republican Alternative Energy Bill today, which does call for 100 new nuclear plants over the next 20 years. Senator Alexander points out so appropriately that we built the first 100 nuclear reactors in our country in only 20 years, and we know a whole lot more today than we knew then, and this is an example of how much more we need. Number three, economic stimulus has to include the creation of these new jobs, any responsible economic stimulus. This is where the impact is going to be the greatest, is put your focus on creating the new energy jobs and industries of the future for economic stimulus. It would have a far greater impact than any other investments, even than we've already made. The energy technology industry is the only way to balance the budget, again, by generating robust U.S. export revenues in manufacturing of these new solutions for our world. It is logical, and so many people understand that, and then number four, I'm here today, and finally to say, BMW represents the kind of excellence in U.S. innovation and industry that we need desperately, so the next generation of these young people will see that in the United States, you can rise to any level of intellectual superiority and make a profit doing it, and that all of this industry is not going to go elsewhere. That's why this is so important. Why is Tennessee here? We've seen BMW perform with excellence in Tennessee, and we believe in them, and we believe in U.S. industry, and we believe that this is the future if we're ever going to recover. There's a lot of fear out there about what's going on in our country today whether or not we can be competitive, whether or not the next generation is going to continue to lead the world, this is one really important piece of our own competitiveness for the future as Americans. So I'm here today to say thanks to everyone, but we still got to convince a lot of people in this city that this is important and timely and must be considered in any solution that the United States Congress and Administration brings.